మహాపరిశుద్రులు మహోన్నతుడైన మా ప్రియ పరలోకొత్తంది మీ పరిశుద్ధ నామంకు స్థుతులు స్తోత్రంలో వందనాం చెందించుకుంటున్నాం నాయన ప్రేమ స్వరూపి నమ్మదగిన దేవ నీకే వందనాలు ప్రభా గొప్ప దేవ నాయన మరి ఏ యోగ్యత లేనటువంటి మమ్మల్ని మీ యొక్క బిడ్డలుగా ఎన్నుకొని ఇచ్చిన ఈ గొప్ప తరుణం కొరకు నీకు స్తోత్రము గడిచిన వారమంతా మమ్మల్ని కాచి కాపాడిన ప్రభా నీ రెక్కల కింద భద్రపరిచి తండ్రి మరి ఒక్కసారి మేమందరము నీ వాక్యం ధ్యానించడానికి ఇచ్చిన ఈ గొప్ప తరుణం కొరకు నీకు స్తోత్రము గొప్ప దేవానాయన మరి మీ బా దాసుడైన పాస్ట్ సురేష్ గారు వాక్యం అందించిన ఉండగా తండ్రి నాయన మరి మీ యొక్క పరిశుద్ధాత్మత నింపండి సిల్వ చాటును మరుగుపరిచి తండ్రి మరి మీ యొక్క మర్మంని మాకు తెలియపరచండి నాయన వాక్యానుసారమైన జీవితం మేము జీవించడానికి మాకు సహాయం చేయండి మీ వా నీ యొక్క రాకడ కొరకు మమ్మల్ని సిద్ధపరచండి ప్రభా మరి అంతేకాకుండా పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ అయిన మాకు ఆ వాక్యం ధ్యానించుండగా తండ్రి మరి మాకు మంచి తెలివి జ్ఞానము వివేచన గొప్ప దేవ నాయన మరి పాస్టర్ గారిని ప్రత్యేకంగా దీవించండి తనను తన కుటుంబాన్ని ఆశీర్వదించండి తన పరిచర్యను ఆశీర్వదించండి గొప్ప తండ్రి మరి ప్రతి ఒక్క పార్టిసిపెంట్ ని వారి వారి కుటుంబాలను దీవించండి నాయన మరి ఇంకా జాయిన్ కావలసిన వారిని తండ్రి మరి జాయిన్ అవుటకు వారికి అనుకు అనుకూలత దయచేయండి ఈ కొద్ది విన్నపములు మా ప్రభైన క్రీస్తు పేట వేడుకుంటున్నాం తండ్రి బిఫోర్ వి ఎంబార్క్ ఆన్ ద స్టడీ ఆఫ్ చాప్టర్ థర్టీ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద బుక్ ఆఫ్ నంబర్స్ ఐ వుడ్ రిక్వెస్ట్ సిస్టర్ క్యాథరీన్ టుడే సిస్టర్ జ్యోతి ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ అర్ డిసబిలిటీ టు రీడ్ ద స్క్రిప్చర్ పోర్షన్స్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ సమ్ అన్ఎక్స్పెక్టెడ్ డెవలప్మెంట్ జస్ట్ నౌ ఐ గాట్ అ మెసేజ్ దట్ హీఈస్ అనేబుల్ టు జాయిన్ లెట్ అస్ ప్రే దట్ ద లార్డ్ విల్ బీ విత్ సిస్టర్ జ్యోతి ఐ షీ ఈస్ డూయింగ్ గ్రేట్ వర్క్ taking care of our mom um, i request sister kathleen to read one scripture portion uh, which is very much relevant to the study which you are going to do today i will be referring to that scripture portion again in the course of the study but uh, this is uh, something which we need to know at this point of time psalm 44 verses 2 and 3 sister kathleen psalm 44 verses 2 and 3 Psalm 44, verses 2 and 3. Yeah. We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us the deeds you did in their days, in days of old. You drove out the nations with your hand, but then you planted, you afflicted the peoples and cast them out. Yeah, 2 and 3, sister. Verse 3 also. You did not gain... For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you favored them. Thank you, sister. It was not their sword that they won the land, nor did they bring their arm bring, nor did their arm bring them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you loved them. Okay, that is... one of the key scripture portions also which we will focus upon today shall we look to the lord in prayer father in heaven once again oh lord we praise and thank thee for this wonderful session oh lord which has been arranged by the family of brother benoni richards we praise and thank thee for each and every participant oh master they could have been elsewhere at this time but they have decided to spend this time in your presence because they love you and they want to grow scripturally and spiritually we commit Lord, the entire session into your hands. Let every thought, action and words of ours bring thee joy and glory. In Jesus' holy precious name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Before uh, we go to the actual study, uh, we will just have a recap of the Israelites' journey right from the time they left Egypt. There is an animation uh, giving us a clear idea as to how they travel uh, brother chandu will display it for us so that we will know from where <coughs> the action of uh, numbers 31 is based we need to know where they are at this point of time we need to know um, the base or the geographical base uh, so as to understand the contents of 
Numbers chapter 31. Okay. So, brother, it's not visible, brother. Yeah, brother Chandu will display it for us. And there is a corresponding timeline also uh, as regards this animation. It has been prepared with a lot of efforts. Brother Chandu, is it opening? Can you see it, bro? Can you see it? <laughs> able to see Brother Chandu. Uh, maybe if uh, just for a minute, uh, Brother uh, Beno makes me a co-host, I'll try to uh, show yeah. that from my uh, laptop. Yeah. Yes, sir, she's a co-host now. Yeah. Veno, will you just uh, enlarge my screen once again? Uh, I got into grid mode. Is it possible? Uh, sir, sir you, you can do it on the end. You click on view. There's a option called view in the right hand top corner. Okay. You click that, there'll be a speaker view, grid view. You can search that. Okay, okay. Slight Is everybody able to see the screen? Can I hear a yes? Yes, Pastor. Yes, screen yes. is visible. Yeah. Yes, now we are going into the... Uh, the video file is not visible. The is bubble... everybody able to see now? Egypt, Ramesses, where they have started? The no, no, no. No, no. no. Yeah, no. you can see. Now I'm, I'm... You can see the timeline also below. Uh, 1513 then 1511, then 1473, okay? Um, can't see, can't see. Everybody is able to see, can I hear a yes? No, no, Suresh. No, no. Pastor, we can't see. No, Pastor. You are not able to see? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I'll just uh, uh, rejoin, just... <coughs> the Bible lands now, yes, Suresh. Now Hello. it's coming. Yeah. Can you see it now? Yeah, yes, yes. Visible now. Okay, thank yes. you. <coughs> Thank you. 
So, uh, everybody is able to see now? Yes. Can yeah. just say no, we can faster, see. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, we'll go to this. <coughs> You can play. Yeah, you can see now the yeah. movement of the people. Then they cross the Red Sea. No, no. Not able to see. No. Now we, it's gone off faster. Uh, brother, I'll, I'll share the screen. You please stop your. Uh... You are able to display, brother? Yeah. I'm able to display. Brother Chandu, if you are able to display, then nothing like it. Okay, I am displaying. Okay, please display, brother. Go ahead, Chandu. It has been made with a lot of effort. Okay. <laughs> I want to show you this. Okay. One second now. <clears throat> made with a lot of effort, displayed with a lot of effort. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see it now, bro? Can you see? Yes, 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 it's visible. Yes. yes. Can you hear this sound of Yes, it is audible and visible. Yes. But a movie, movie. Yes. It is Israel's travel. No, not Isaac's travel. Yeah, there. There it is. Yes, brother. From Ramesses, they have started. The army is chasing them. They have come up to the Red Sea. Um, then uh, they are crossing the Red Sea. The Pharaoh's army is but it is drowned. The Pharaoh's army is drowned. Look at how uh, how much of hard work has gone into this. Um, means not prepared by me, but prepared by someone else to be a teaching aid in my Bible study. So look at them. Look at every place which is mapped. It is not a cock and bull story. Even today. All the lands are very much there, uh, how it has been mapped. Uh, and it takes them a journey of 46 days to reach Mount Sinai. You can see they have come up to, down to Mount Sinai. And you can see the timeline also below. Uh, it takes 46 days to come there. And then they are at Mount Sinai for quite some time. 
they receive the law, the book of Leviticus, and then they move. <clears throat> they are moving up towards the promised land. And uh, moment they reach Tadesh, that is the time they are so close to the promised land, Moses sends uh, 12 spies, they come back, 10 of them come back with a negative report, they discourage the people, they bring the curse upon themselves, and they are condemned to travel in the wilderness for another 38 years. It is not 40 years, it is actually 38 years. Uh, God is graceful. He has taken the time from the time they left Egypt and not from the time they disobeyed. Okay? <laughs> so actually it would come to 38 years. Yeah. Yeah. You can see everything has been mapped. Now <clears throat> they are moving again towards the promised land. Brother, continue. Yeah. Yeah. There they are. Everything has been mapped. And uh, those who need the soft copy of this animation, please uh, put your email ID to me. I have the email IDs of quite a few of our participants. Um, uh, if you all of you give me your email IDs, I'll be grateful. Um, <clears throat> I'll send the soft copy. This is not even uh, not, not having not only the animated journey of Israelites, it is having the journeys of Abraham, Isaac. You can see um, Abraham's travels, Isaac's travels, Jacob's travels, Israel's travels, Paul's travels, Jesus' travels, and maps and locations uh, made with a lot of effort. Um, it would be a very valuable teaching tool for all of you because I all believe that you are going to be wonderful teachers of God's word. <laughs> Say amen <laughs> in your heart of hearts. And uh, uh, dear friends, uh, I felt so happy to get hold of this particular uh, animations and um, present it to you. Uh, so now they are at Mount, uh, very close to Mount Nebo, where uh, Moses would soon disappear. Um, we will now read the scripture portions and come to the slideshow. We'll read the scripture portions and come to the slideshow. Please, in your uh, in our group itself, you can give me your email IDs or you can give me your email IDs in my personal window. I will send the soft copy of uh, this particular uh, so software into, uh, to your email IDs. Okay? So we will get into the slideshow. Brother Chandu, I will go to the slideshow now. Slight delay because uh, technically <laughs> I was not well equipped and Brother Chandu also needs some practice. Yeah, <clears throat> map of Israel we have seen, travel from Egypt to Canaan animation. And now we'll come to the outline of uh, chapter 31. Uh, Sister Ch uh, Catherine will read out for us uh, verses 1 and 2. Uh, I'm using all uh, rhyming words to make us understand chapter 31 in a better way, all ending with T-I-O-N. Okay, first is retribution, then selection, then devastation, then indignation, instruction, purification, division, exception, dedication, and consecration. Okay, so first is retribution. Retribution means punishment for what people have done to the people of Israel. The Midianites, we all read in Numbers chapter 22 to 25, they made plans to bring Balaam, the prophet, and make him curse the people of Israel. God protected them. Then they devised a horrific plan with uh, Balaam leading the way of sending some Midianite women, pretty Midianite women into the Israeli camp and then leading them into idol worship whereby God's anger came upon the Israelites. So now is the time for God's vengeance to come upon these Midianites who conspired against the land of, uh, who conspired against the people of Israel. Okay, so this is the background. We will see uh, verses one and two. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, take vengeance on the Midianites for the children of Israel. Afterward, you shall be gathered to your people. Yeah. After this work is done, the Lord says to Moses, after you have sent the army to punish the Midianites, then you shall be gathered unto the people. We all know that uh, 
Moses did not enter the promised land physically. <clears throat> we all know uh, why that uh, punishment came upon Moses. But uh, since we are on this subject, slightly I'm going a bit deep. Uh, did Moses ever, did Moses' feet touch <laughs> the promised land? Can we say Moses' feet? Because we are on the subject, I'm slightly going a uh, bit deep. Uh, did Moses' feet touch the promised land? Brother Chandu says yes. Very good. Uh, in what circumstances or in what conditions? Mount of Transfiguration? Absolutely. That's the right answer. Mount of Transfiguration. We see Moses and Elijah very much in the promised land. <laughs> Those of us who have gone to Israel, we know uh, Mount Tabor is there. That is where uh, the transpiration experience took place, Mount Tabor. Uh, we all, uh, those of us who have traveled to Israel, we have gone atop that Mount Tabor. We have seen a small church also there. We have prayed and we have come back. So on Mount Tabor, yes, Moses in his glorified body, <laughs> in a different transcendental body, he appeared before our Lord Jesus Christ along with Elijah. And his feet did touch the promised land. So uh, God is gracious that way. And uh, now verses 1 and 2 is all about retribution. That God is instructing Moses to, uh, to send an army upon the Midianites. And verses 3 to 6 is all about selection. Uh, when you read verses 7 to 13, we see actually the Midianite kingdom consisted of five sub-kingdoms. I repeat, the Midianite kingdom consisted of five sub-kingdoms and it had a huge population. And uh, if it had a huge population, that means their army also was quite formidable. Their army also was huge. But Midianite king was afraid of the Israelites, even though God at that point of time did not intend that Israelites should fight the Midianites. I have shared with you already that God had promised land only which is on the western side of River Jordan. Just to illustrate, I'm showing this to you. Dear friends, if this is River Jordan, if this is River Jordan, middle part, then the western part only, the Lord said, I'll give to the Israelites, not the eastern part. The eastern side kings unnecessarily got frightened. They fought against the Israelites thinking they are going to attack them. One was King Sihan, another was King Og of Basha, and they were routed by the Israelite army. And the Midianite king, when he heard of all this, he was afraid to go on direct confrontation mode. He thought, I'll bring Balaam and get them cursed, because if I go physically against them, I do not stand a chance, because Sihan was defeated, Og was defeated, I do not stand a chance, so I'll bring Balaam and make uh, Balaam curse them. <clears throat> We all know that Balaam was not able to curse them because God transferred his heart, uh, transformed his heart in such a way out of his mouth only blessings came and not curses. Now, <clears throat> when you look at the rest of the scripture portion, from the booty which the Israelites get after the war, from the plunder, from the number of sheep, from the number of camels and all that which they get, we can make out that the Midianite kingdom, having five sub-kingdoms, had considerable population. If the population was considerable, their army also was considerable. They had, they had a formidable army, going up to several numbers. But who went <laughs> to fight against them? How many of them uh, uh, actually go to fight against this huge uh, Midianite army? That is what is very fascinating. Very inspiring. In Telugu, we often sing this song. For those who, who are familiar with Telugu, you will really uh, uh, relish whenever you sing this song. Israelu sainya mundu nadzi poina daivama. So uh, always the Israelite army is smaller in number when compared to the enemy's army. But they emerge victorious. Reason is the presence of the Lord is with them. Now, just uh, Sister uh, uh, Catherine will read out for us from verses uh, 3 to uh, 7. Um, Brother Chandu also will display. For fighting such a huge army of the Midianites consisting of five sub-kingdoms, 
just think how many actually israeli soldiers went to fight so moses spoke to the people saying ah. arm some of yourselves for war and let them go against the midianites to take vengeance for the lord on midian a thousand from each tribe of all the tribes of israel you shall send to the war so there were recruited from the divisions of israel 1000 from each tribe 12000 armed for war then moses sent them to the war 1000 from each tribe he sent them to the war with phinehas the son of eleazar the priest with the holy articles and the signal trumpets in his hand thank and you his... sister thank you now <clears throat> how many of them go to fight only 12000 What is twelve thousand when compared to the vast army of the Midianites? <clears throat> uh, just nothing actually. But thousand is sufficient. And who is leading them? Phinehas. I hope you remember all uh, who Phinehas is. He showed righteous indignation in Numbers chapter twenty-five. We show we see him showing great zeal for the law when he saw one leader of the tribe of Simeon. committing adultery he took a spear went into the tent speared both the man and the woman together he showed a zeal for the lord he showed righteous indignation whenever i use the word righteous indignation what action of our lord jesus christ comes to your mind he also showed righteous indignation what action of our lord jesus christ out of zeal for god's holiness what comes to your mind he cleared the temple no he throwing out the marketers <laughs> the people you know uh, converting the temple into a marketplace on the day of uh, on the day we celebrate as the palm sunday <laughs> when our lord jesus christ entered jerusalem <clears throat> uh, just i'm bringing a section of palm sunday for our meditation as our lord jesus christ entered jerusalem you know the israelites were shouting hosanna hosanna actually uh, the greek rendition is hosiana means liberators liberators they were thinking he is going to perform miracles and liberate them from the roman rule uh, i just use this to make you understand in a better way as he entered jerusalem on the right side was the roman garrison at a place called antonia fortress okay i repeat antonia fortress here all the roman soldiers were based and the temple was on the eastern side now as jesus entered people were looking with lot of expectations that he would go to the right side into the antonia fortress and throw out the roman soldiers but he did not throw out the roman soldiers he went to the eastern side and threw out the jewish traders out of the temple <laughs> throwing out throwing out they thought he will throw out the roman soldiers out of Uh, the city of jerusalem but he threw out the jewish traders who had no regard for god's holiness they converted the temple into a marketplace and uh, that righteous indignation we see in the scriptures all along and one of the instances is phinehas the grandson of aaron showing that kind of righteous indignation when the one leader of the tribe of simeon was indulging in adultery um, along with a midianite lady now he has a zeal for the lord and the lord blesses him towards the end of book of numbers chapter 25 that he holds a special place in the eyes of the lord phinehas holds a special place in the eyes of the lord and look at uh, the responsibility given to phinehas he is a spiritual leader as they are going into the battle only 12000 men only 12000 men he is their spiritual leader who is going into the battle but who is their physical leader at that point of time even though it is not written in uh, numbers chapter 31 who is their physical leader obviously joshua obviously joshua that's what biblical scholars say even though joshua's name is not there uh, the physical leader who led them into battle was joshua the spiritual leader was phinehas okay so only 12000 men <laughs> going against a mighty midianite army okay and now sister uh, catherine will continue to read uh, she has read up to verse 6 sister catherine continue reading from verse 6 onwards and um, they warred yeah and they warred against the midianites just as the lord commanded moses and they killed all the males 
they killed the kings of midian with the rest of those who were killed evi rekam zur har and reba the five kings of midian balam the son of beor they also killed with a sword yeah thank you sister <clears throat> now first rhyming word which we use for our meditation is retribution second is selection of the army and the third one is devastation they rooted the midianites devastated rooted the midianites killed five kings and also killed balaam the son of beer dear friends with the map i explained to you from the beginning of numbers 22 where exactly was balaam stay now if this is the midianite land he was staying up north near river euphrates <coughs> he had come all the way from there at the invitation of the midianite king to curse the israelites at the invitation he was staying quite far away near river euphrates uh, we can uh, read from numbers chapter 22 verse 1 uh, as uh, the king of midian is frightened he sends a word to bala <clears throat> okay now bala son of zipper i'm reading from verse 2 saw all that israel had done to the amorites and moab was terrified because there were so many of them indeed moab was filled with dread because of the israelites moab i said to the elders of midian this horde is going to lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field so balak son of zipper who was the king of moab at that time sent messengers to summon balam son of beer who was at pethor near the river in his native land that river is river euphrates and pethor is up north now as bible students let's come back to the slide show as bible students you should get a doubt doubt is did the israeli army comprising of 12000 men travel all the way to pethio near river euphrates to kill bala because this five midianite kings are very much around there so when they fought against them yes they were physically geographically nearby so they fought against them they defeated them they killed them but how come they killed bala son of beer who is living a far away at river euphrates what happened dear friends <clears throat> let me share with you if the steps of the righteous men are ordered by the lord even the steps of the unrighteous men are ordered by the lord okay let me share with you what i mean by that if the steps of the righteous men and women are ordered by the lord for their blessing the steps of the unrighteous men is are also ordered by the lord for their chastisement or punishment are you with me what comes to your mind when you uh, hear this words the steps of the righteous men or even i will say women are ordered by the lord when ruth who had committed her life to the almighty god who you know when she comes to bethlehem she is a widow she is staying with a mother in law who is also a widow listen to me very carefully ruth is a widow her mother in law is a widow they are living in abject poverty and as per leviticus chapter 19 verse 19 the poor are allowed to go into the fields at the time of the harvest and pick up what all grains have fallen to the ground so she is a moabites Ruth doesn't know the law, but she has come to know of this law through her mother-in-law Naomi. And as she sets out from her house to pick up the fallen grain in the fields of harvest, did she? I'm asking you a question. Give me an yes or no. Did she know that if she is going into the fields of her future husband? Give me an answer. Yes. No. no absolutely. She did not know. she was going into the fields of her kinsman redeemer kinsman redeemer means a person who is closely related who has a legal statutory obligation to marry a, a widow 
<clears throat> the closest relate is called the kinsman redeemer and how Boaz plays the role of kinsman redeemer. We come to Ruth chapter four, we'll come to know of it. Okay, anyway, but the main point is, did Ruth know that she was being led by the Lord into the field of her kinsman redeemer, a person who is going to marry her? The very field, listen to me very carefully, the very field where she went to pick up the grain as a woman in poverty, she was going to become the wife of that master. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amazing, is it not? The very thing when she went as a widow to, in abject poverty to pick up the fallen grain, she was going to become the owner or the co-owner of that field. Amazing. Steps of the righteous men are ordered by the Lord for their blessings. And steps of the unrighteous men are also ordered by the Lord for their chastisement. You know why Balaam came? He never respected the uh, honest, uh, he never respected the attack from the Israeli army. He had given a horrific plan to the Midianite kings led by uh, Bala, the son of Zippor. He was trying to bring harm upon the Israelites. He found that the hands of the Lord were covering the Israelites. The hands of the Lord were a protection to the Israelites. He cannot do any harm to the Israelites. That Balaam realized. And look at the horrific plan which he had. The very hands which were protecting the Israelites, he made those very hands crush the Israelites. I repeat. Balaam's conspiracy led to the hands of the Lord, which, are, which was protecting the Israelites, to crush that Israelites to an extent. What did Balaam advise? What was Balaam's advice to uh, the Midianites? Send pretty women into the camps of the Israelites. They will seduce them. They will lure them into idol worship. And the very hands of the Lord which are protecting them will crush them. Satan does that even today. Can Satan harm us? He hates us. He hates us very much. Can he harm us directly? No. He will bring temptations into our life. When we yield to those temptations, Satan rejoices because the hands of the Lord, which are protecting us till now, are used to punish us, to cause us pain. Same thing Satan is doing even now. What Balaam did, because the plan of Balaam was also satanic in nature. Satan knows, even though he hates Christians, he cannot do them any harm till God permits. And Satan rejoices when the hands of the Lord, which are protecting the people, his people, are used to crush them. Abba, he feels so happy. He wants us to yield to his temptations because eventually God's hand will crush us. I'll ask you a question. Give me an S or no. The Israelites who perished in the wilderness journey, were they killed by their enemies? Or will they crushed by the hands of the Lord? The Israelites who perished in the wilderness. Pharaoh's army could not do any harm to them. Their enemies could not do any harm to them. Their enemies could not do any harm to them. They succumbed to the temptations. And the very hands of the Lord which was protecting them was used to crush them. Are you understanding? Can Pharaoh kill the Israelites? No way. Can the Amalekites kill the Israelites? No way. Can any enemy kill the Israelites? No way. But look at Satan working through Balaam. He brought about a situation whereby the hands which were protecting crushed them. And even today, he uses that same kind of devious plans. And uh, now Balaam, after having hatched that horrific conspiracy, of making God punish the Israelites, he goes back, he gives the plan to the Midianite kings and then goes to River Ephrates to stay there. 
Now, those were not the days of cell phone. Eh? <laughs> Are you with me? Those were not the days of cell phone, whereby communication is fast. That his plan actually worked. Listen to me very carefully. That his plan <laughs> actually worked. Uh, Balaam was not an Israelite, but a devout Gentile. Sister Catherine has asked a question. He was not a, a Israelite, but a devout Gentile to start with. The start is good. Dear friends, always remember, in spiritual journey, the end is as important as the start. Who makes that declaration? I have fought the good fight. I have finished my race. Give me an answer in the public chat. <laughs> I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. Apostle Paul, yes, very good. Praise the Lord. So, the, the end in the spiritual journey is as important as the beginning. How are we ending? Balaam's start was good. That is why God could uh, speak to him face to face when he was in uh, when he was at Pithor near river Euphrates. God comes and tells him, do not go with this median arts. Do not go with this. That was the first instruction of the Lord. He is having a face-to-face -face relationship with the Lord. That means very devout person, devout prophet to start with. Otherwise, that blessing of every word which he speaks getting fulfilled would not come about in his life. That gift would not come about in his life. Whatever Balaam speaks will take place. Because he had that strong relationship with the Lord, God gave him that gift. But lure of the Luca, money, he fell for it. Who else fell for it? <laughs> Immediately he will give me an answer. Judas, right? So, <clears throat> fell for it. And uh, what happened consequently? He had to apply. Now, that this plan worked. He did not know immediately. By the time the news reached Bala, that the plan worked, no, already punishment of the Lord had come upon the Israelites. The Israelites had repented. And now God is instructing Moses to send an army to finish off the Midianites. This was not the days of cell phone and faster communication. Now, Balaam in his greed, listen to me very carefully. Balaam in his greed, once he comes to know that the plan has worked, he's coming to the Midianite kings to get his payment. Are you with me? He's coming to the median and kings to get his payment, blissfully unaware of the fact that is the time God is ordering the Israelites to go and fight against the Midianites. So the steps of the unrighteous are also ordered by the Lord to chastise them. Are you with me? So Balaam finds himself amongst the five Midianite kings exactly at the time the Israelites are launching an attack. And he's killed with other five Midianite kings. Are you with me? That is the punishment he has got for <clears throat> so many deaths which he has caused amongst God's people by way of making a wicked plan. Are you all with me? So dear friends, steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. The steps of the unrighteous are also ordered by the Lord. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord for their blessings. And steps of the unrighteous are ordered, are also ordered by the Lord for the curse to come upon them. Are you with me? So, <clears throat> uh, let us come back to the slideshow. Uh, as future teachers of God's word, you should be able to know how come Balaam landed amongst the five Midianite kings uh, at a time when he should have been near river, river Euphrates. You know, he came to collect his payment. He came to collect his payment blissfully unaware that at that time, God was instructing Moses to launch an attack upon the Midianite kings. And uh, after devastation, after devastation, we come to indignation. Uh, continue, sister. Uh, as the Israelite army is bringing back the plunder, uh, what is the reaction of Moses when he sees a part of the plunder? When he sees the part of the plunder, come down, brother Chandu. As, and the children of Israel yeah. took the women of Midian captive. Yeah with their little ones and took as spoil all their cattle, all their flocks and all their goods. Um, Brother Chandu, please go to chapter 31. We are uh, in number, uh, yeah. 
as sister is reading, people can, those who are not able to follow uh, sister's reading uh, can follow what is written, what is displayed, what cannot be followed by way of display can be followed by way of reading. So we have two options. Sister, continue reading. They also burned with fire all the cities where they dwelt and all their forts. And they took all the spoil and all the booty of man and beast. Yeah. Then, they, then they brought the captives, the booty and the spoil to Moses, to Eleazar the priest and to the congregation of the children of Israel, to the camp in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. Yeah. And Moses, Eleazar the priest and all the leaders of the congregation went to meet them outside the camp. Yeah. But, Mo but Moses was angry with the officers of the army with the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds who had come from the battle. Mm. Why was he angry? And Moses said to them, have you kept all the women alive? Look, these women caused the children of Israel through the council of Balaam to trespass against the Lord in the incident of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Now therefore, kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman who has known a man intimately. But keep alive for yourselves all the young girls who have not known a man intimately. Thank you, sister. Let's go back to the slideshow. So Moses is angry. Why? Because they have brought amongst the captives the very women who had led the Israelites astray on the council of Balaam the prophet. So that is why verses 14 to 16 is all about indignation. It is all about indignation. And uh, he says, once again, these ladies, they have that mind of tempting you. They have the mind of leading you astray. So if they are once again amongst you, once again, they will lead you astray. Why have you brought them here? You should have finished them off. You should have exterminated them. That was the instruction of Moses. And then he says, keep the little girls only. <clears throat> Keep the little girls to uh, help as your maids, to help as your um, helpers in your houses. Or at that time, it was only tents. Okay, so <clears throat> that was the instruction uh, Moses gave to the uh, soldiers who came back with the plunder. Okay, so uh, verses one to two, it is about retribution. Uh, then verses three to six is about selection. Verses seven to thirteen is about devastation. Verses 14 to 16 is about indignation. Moses is angry that they have brought back the very women um, or the women of that category who had led them astray. Women, of, I will say, of that category who had led them astray. And then verses 17 to 18 is instruction. Then we will read from verses 19 to 24 about the purification. Now, these soldiers had gone on to fight. <clears throat> Now, I'll ask you a question. Uh, when they had gone out to fight and when they were victorious in the battle, did they, did they touch any dead bodies? Give me an answer in the public chat. <laughs> did they touch any dead bodies? Yes, says Mr. Catherine. Absolutely. They are bound to touch many. <laughs> Absolutely. So there is that purification ritual which they have to go through. And uh, can any one of you in the group. I would be happy if you are not able to give an answer also. No problem. Now, can you tell me the chapter in the book of Numbers which deals with this particular ritual of purification after touching a dead body? There, pure waters are made using the red hypha. Can anyone tell me the chapter number? We are all here to learn. If you have forgotten also, <laughs> Uh, we can refresh our memories. Uh, we had dealt in detail about Numbers chapter 19, right? The purification ritual. Uh, verse 15 says, <laughs> Catherine, sister, it is verse chapter 19, okay? Anyway, make a note of it. Do not forget how that uh, pure waters have, uh, how the purification waters are prepared by using the carcass of the red hypha. And uh, now the soldiers have to go through the purification ceremony since they have touched many, many dead bodies. Okay, so let us uh, look at that uh, scripture portion and all their uh, swords, 
their spears, the weapons which they use during the war. Now they have to go through the fire. <clears throat> what cannot be burned has to be purified by putting it through the fire. And what can be, what gets burned has to be cleansed by using uh, the water set apart for this purpose. Water is made, uh, you know, using the carcass of the red hypha. Okay. Now uh, let us look at the, this scripture portion also. Um, verse 16 onwards, sister. Verse 16 onwards. Verse 16 onwards. 16 or 19, Pastor. Look, these women caused the children of Israel. Yeah, you can go to uh, verse 19. 19 also. And as for you, remain outside the camp seven days. Whoever has killed any person and whoever has touched any slain, purify yourselves and your captives. Yeah. On the third day and on the seventh day, purify every garment, everything made of leather, everything woven of goat's hair, and everything made of wood. Then Eliezer the priest said to the men of war who had gone to the battle, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord commanded Moses. Only the gold, the silver, the bronze, the iron, the tin, and the lead. Everything that can endure fire, you shall put through the fire, and it shall be clean, and it shall be purified with the water of purification. But all that cannot endure fire, you shall put through water. And you shall wash your clothes on the seventh day, and be clean, and afterward you may come into the camp. Now the Thank Lord you, sister. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> let's go back to the slideshow. Now, uh, I already told you what can be purified through fire, the swords, the weapons of warfare that has to be put through the fire. And they who have gone out to fight, the soldiers have to use that purification water uh, prepared using the red eifer for cleansing themselves. Then verses 25 to 47, that is a very extensive scripture portion, quite an extensive scripture portion. Uh, I, if I make you read, it will take long time. So I'll just give you the summary as to how Moses instructed the soldiers to divide the plunder. Okay, uh, let's go back to the slideshow. Uh, uh, let's go back to the slideshow. How the plunder was divided. Okay. <clears throat> Brother, next uh, slide. Yeah, this red eye firm we have seen, Numbers chapter 19, okay? Now, total number of sheep, 6,75,000. I'll just read it out. To the soldiers, 50%, 3,37,500. And to the people, 3,37,500, okay? Uh, now, <laughs> let's, uh, uh, before I uh, go any further, you are seeing here, that the plunder is equally divided, right? Uh, for the beeves, 72,000 to the soldiers, 36,000 to the people, 36,000. Uh, then asses, 61,000 was gathered to the soldiers, 30,500 to the people, 30,500. Then persons, uh, means uh, the little girls uh, who were kept alive, uh, to the soldiers, 16,000 and to the people, 16,000. Now, Dear friends, who put their lives to risk? <laughs> the soldiers, right? Huh? Then why is the Lord asking um, the soldiers to give 50% to the people who did not accompany them to war? Has the Lord made a mistake? <laughs> Dear friends, uh, just think for a moment. Who, who put their lives to risk? The 12,000 men, right? The 12,000 men, they put their lives to risk. They went and waged a war. The people, the other people who are getting the share of the plunder, they did not accompany them to the war field. They did not put their lives virtually to risk. But why are they also getting 50% of the plunder? Reason is, they also equally faced the risk posed by the Midianites' temptation. Are you with me? When the women came into the camp, 
all those who sinned, we saw the number, 24,000. The others resisted the temptation. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Are you all with me? They are overcomers of the temptation. They also faced a risk from the Midianites. They stood up for the Lord. And when the soldiers went to fight, they were praying for their safety. Are you all with me? Frontline soldiers and those who support from the backside, all are equally responsible for the success of the battle. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Even today, let me tell you, dear friends, in the churches, the preachers, the worship leaders, the singers, the choir, they may get the spotlight on them, but there are several workers in the church who are all supporting from the back. They would get the equal reward when the Lord distributes the rewards on the day of judgment. Are you all with me? Are you all with me, dear friends? Yes, again I'm telling you, even today in the church, on whom is the spotlight always placed? The preachers, the miracle doers, the prophets, the apostles, the teachers, the pastors, the choir leaders, the worship leaders, the choir members. What about those who have silently supported them from behind? Who may not have come into the spotlight, but their efforts were necessary to keep the church operating, to keep the church functional, to keep the church moving forward. Dear friends, you know what uh, Paul, uh, uh, what uh, John writes to Gaius, one of the wonderful church leaders of the first century. Uh, Sister Catherine will read out for us uh, from third epistle of John, third epistle of John, verse seven onwards. See, uh, Gaius was not in the front line. But uh, what all he was doing, uh, uh, we will <clears throat> please read from verse 5 onwards, sister. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church if you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. Because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such, that we may become fellow workers for the truth. We may become fellow workers for the truth. You know what was Gaius doing? Gaius, one of the church elders, as the missionaries went, he would always offer hospitality when the missionaries came to his town. And not only would he give hospitality to them, he would give them a generous offering as they are going ahead forward. Because they would not accept help from the pagans. Are you with me? Because if they accept help from the pagans, they feel, you know, their efforts may get diluted. The sincerity of their efforts may get diluted. People may start suspecting, hey, this man is doing God's work or this man is doing business. So they would not accept uh, any help from the pagans, lest the sincerity is doubted. So what was Gaius doing? The missionaries who would come to his town, he would extend hospitality to them. Then as they are leaving, he would give a generous offering and send them. Amazing. And was he in the front line? How many of us remember Gaius like we remember Peter, James, and John? I'm asking you a question. Give me the names of great New Testament leaders. Immediately the names which come out. Peter, James, John, Paul, Barnabas. What about Gaius? What about Onesiphorus? What about Philemon? That is why one biblical scholar put it this way. Early church was not only about Peter, James, and John. It was also about Onesiphorus, Gaius, and Philemon. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Are you understanding? Early church was not only about Peter, James, and John. It was also about Onesiphorus, Gaius, and Philemon. So these people also faced temptation from the Midianites. They resisted the temptation. And as the soldiers went out to fight, they prayed for their safety. Let's come back to the slideshow. That is why they are entitled to the equal share. 
Okay, let's go back to the slideshow. Yeah, enlarge the slide, brother. And then, <clears throat> yeah. And from uh, what uh, the soldiers have got, again, a share is given to the Levites. Okay, a share is given to the Levites of the sheep, uh, which the soldiers have got, 3,37,500. They are giving 675 to the Levites. To the Lord means it is to the Levites only. 6,750 is given uh, by the people to the Levites. Again, <clears throat> from the share of after the sheep comes the beeves, 72 <laughs> goes to uh, from the uh, Levites, from the soldiers, and from the people, 720. Then from the, uh, uh, as far as the asses are concerned, from the soldiers, 61 goes to the uh, uh, Levites from the soldiers, 610 from the people. And uh, as regards the young girls who have to serve as servant girls or maids, 32, uh, you know, goes to the uh, Lord from the soldiers and 332 uh, uh, from the people to the Levites. So here again, <laughs> you see, since only 12,000 soldiers went, obviously their contribution to the Levites would be comparatively, comparatively be less than the lakhs and lakhs of people who are behind them. Why less contribution from the soldiers? Less contribution from the soldiers is because only 12,000 people went. <laughs> are you with me? So uh, you can just note a part of that. Out of the share uh, the soldiers get, 500th part, listen to me very carefully, 500th part of the soldiers' uh, uh, share goes to the Levites. 50th part of the share goes to the, uh, of the people go to the Levites. So soldiers and the people are giving to the Levites. 500th part, soldiers are giving. 50th part, the people are giving because their population is much more than the 12,000 soldiers who went to fight. Are you all with me? So <clears throat> please understand all this. And uh, what is the name of the book we are focusing upon? Numbers, Arithmoy. <laughs> so all the details are given. <laughs> Why the book of numbers is known as book of numbers is there is no compromise when it comes to numbers. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Every detail is mentioned. Are you with me? <laughs> Why the book of numbers is called book of numbers is there is no compromise when it comes to giving details of numbers. Okay. So, Brother Chandrasekhar says, Hallelujah. Okay. Now, uh, let's come to the conclusion. Uh, we are almost there. I want to complete this chapter. Uh, <clears throat> I made you read uh, uh, Psalm 44, verses 2 and 3. Lord, not with their hands did they secure victory, but by your hands they secured victory. Now comes a great miracle, or rather the revelation of a great miracle which took place in this battle. Whenever a battle takes place between two sides, say our Kargil war with uh, the Pakistani army, we won the Kargil war, but did not soldiers of India also die? I'm asking you a question. Yes, we won the Kargil war, but did not the soldiers of India also die in the battle? Yes. Now read that scripture portion, which is mind-boggling. Which is mind-boggling. Sister Catherine will read out for us. Brother, that's why I'm using that word exception. No, it, it is exception. Means uh, straight mind-boggling. That fact comes out. Uh, Brother Chandu, uh, let us uh, see the let us see the slide. Let us see the slide. Why am I using that word exception? Because uh, it has very rarely happened in the history of wars. Very rarely happened. Sister will read verses forty-eight and forty-nine. Then the officers who were over thousands of the army, the captains of the thousands and captains of the hundreds, came near to Moses. And they said to Moses, Your servants have taken account of the men of war who are under our command, and not a man of us is missing. Therefore, not one man is missing. 12,000 went to war, all 12,000 came back alive. Hallelujah! Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord! 
Amazing, is it not? That's why I made you read Psalm 44 verses 2 and 3. The psalmist is recoll recollecting this kind of witness. Lord, they have not won with their own hands. They did not win by the might of their own hands. They won because your hand was with them. In any battle, in Kargil War, 1971 war, I'm talking about Indian war, so India emerged triumphant, but did not India lose its soldiers? Yes. But here in this war, 12,000 went to fight, and all 12,000 have come back alive. Amazing. And they bring special offerings, saying, we want to give thanks to the Lord for bringing us all back alive. And that is why the last two words, two uh, subheadings which I've used are dedication and verses 50 to 53. All the, they, they have brought some gold. Uh, <clears throat> the, the weight of the gold is also mentioned in the scripture sister. Please read it out. Verses 50 to 53. Now we are going to close now. Verses 50 to 53. Thereafter we have brought an offering for the Lord. What every man found of ornaments of gold armlets and bracelets and signet rings and earrings and necklaces to make atonement for ourselves before the Lord. So Moses and Eliezer the priests received the gold from them, all the fashioned ornaments and all the gold of the offering that they offered to the Lord from the captains of thousands and captains of hundreds was 16,750 shekels. Look at that. The value is also given. We are in the book of Numbers, and there's no compromise when it comes to Numbers, okay? <laughs> Even the value of the gold is given uh, so as to tell us, <clears throat> you know, everything is factual. Everything is factual. Nothing is fictional. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Are you all with me? And then final verse is, Moses and Eliezer, the priest, accepted the gold from the commanders of the army and brought it to the tent of meeting as a memorial for the Israelites before the Lord. That goal is set apart to serve as a memory as to this great miracle of 12,000 men going to fight a huge army and all 12,000 men returning back alive. That goal is set apart as a memorial. Anytime the Levites see that, they will remember and they will glorify the Lord. And that is why the psalmist says. That's why I started with that psalm. Psalm 44, verses 2 and 3. Lord, they have not won by the might of their hands. They have won by the might of your hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you all with me? We will close here. Amazing is chapter 31 of the book of Numbers. Every time we read, we are awestruck by the greatness of our Heavenly Father. And the purpose of Bible study is also to be awestruck by his greatness again and again, so that we refresh our gratitude, so that we refresh our love for him. Unless the gratitude gets renewed, the love will not get renewed. Greater the gratitude, greater the love. More we are awestruck by God's greatness, more is our gratitude. More is our gratitude, more is our love for him. More is our love for him, more is our obedience for him. More is our obedience for him, more is our sacrifices for his glory. More is our sacrifices for his glory, more is the effectiveness of our witness. More is the effectiveness of our witness, more people are drawn to the law. Are you with me? One leads to the other. One leads to the other. Greater love, greater obedience. Greater obedience, greater sacrifice for the Lord. Greater sacrifice for the Lord. Greater attraction of the uh, unbelievers to the Lord. I mean, this man is going to this extent of sacrificing for God's glory. His God is truly great. I'm ending with the words of St. Augustine, a great uh, Christian teacher of the 5th century. He says, Jesus is most glorified when people observe that he is more precious to be than all that life can give or death can take away. Are you with me? I repeat. Jesus is most glorified when people observe that he is more precious to me than all that life can give or death can take away. When people realize the value of Jesus in our lives, they are drawn to him. 
Again, I repeat, greater we are awestruck, greater our gratitude, greater our gratitude, greater our love, greater our love, greater our obedience, greater is our obedience, greater is our sacrifices for him, greater is our sacrifices for him, people realize his value in our lives and are drawn to him. Are you with me? We'll close here. We'll close here. Chapter 31 of the Book of Numbers. Slightly we have extended by 15 minutes because we had that technical glitch of uh, you know showing that map and all that. Because of that, there was a 15-minute delay. Um, <clears throat> uh, give me your emails. I'll send that uh, animations to you also. Um, I'll request now at this point of time, Brother Israel, to lead us in closing prayer. Afterwards, we will all mute at that time. Brother uh, Beno will reach, uh, Benoni Richards will lead us in uh, the Lord's prayer. <clears throat> we will pray. Almighty loving Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this wonderful time. You have revealed amazing things today through our dear Pastor Suresh Mahalaji. So many things to note, and so many things to be thankful. Our hearts are filled with gratitude, Lord. We are so precious in your, in your sight that you are doing so many things for us only to be glorified so that many people will be attracted to you. Father, we thank you for teaching us today why the book of Numbers is called the book of Numbers. How many incidents you have showed us today about your mercies, about your glory, about how you take care of your people, how you order the steps of good people and also bad people. Thank you for this time. We learned so many things and our hearts are filled with gratitude and thankfulness. Help us to use this blessed time to be a blessing to others and to imbibe whatever we learned in our lives so that people who see us may really see you in us and glorify you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the family of Brother Benoni. We thank you for all the participants, especially our dear pastor for leading us into this blessed time of Bible study. We commit ourselves, our Bible study, and all our families into your hands till we meet again. In the sweet and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.